I'm joined today by our international correspondent, Alex Newman, and we're talking about uh, Aurora, Colorado Charter School. Now, charter schools are public schools, although there's a little bit more flexibility for parents. But an Aurora, Colorado Charter School, in the weeks leading up to Christmas of this year, is having kids engage in all sorts of spiritual and Islamic activism. Talk a little bit about the situation. Yeah, well, thank you, Duke. And so we, we did get an email from a whistleblowing parent of a first grade student at this school, and uh, we got pictures of all the worksheets they were assigned. And basically, they have these kids learning about Ramadan. They have them uh, painting uh, prayer rugs. They have them studying Ar Arabic uh, calligraphy, explaining that uh, you know Allah is the most merciful and the most gracious. And so uh, this parent asked his child, um, did you learn anything about Jesus? Like, oh yeah, we learned that uh, Muslims pray to Jesus on these rugs. But did you learn anything about Christmas? Oh no, nothing about Christmas. So very, very troubling for this parent. He described himself as a horrified parent and a sad parent. Obviously, we don't want to reveal his identity uh, for his protection and the protection of his child, but very troubling too. And this is, of course, being replicated in uh, public school classrooms all across the country under the guise of hi religious history. Isn't it funny that we got rid of Christianity, right, we, in the public schools, we have got rid of prayer to teach about Christ or Christianity or to teach any of the spiritual or religious aspects of Christmas is a violation of the uh, First Amendment, violation of separation of first and state, right? However, when it comes to being able to teach religions like Islam, we've got these world religion classes that have been added to social studies programs all across the country. And they don't teach Judaism, and they don't teach Christianity, but they're sure very interested in not just teaching the historical and cultural aspects of Islam, because if, by the way, if they did teach the historical aspects of Islam, they'd be foc focusing a lot on colonialism and war and violence and oppression, but they don't do that. When they teach Islam under the guise of religious education, world religion education, history, all of a sudden they become very spiritual. These kids are being asked to recite Muslim prayers, to talk about spirituality with, with regards to Islam. How are they getting away with this? Yeah, it, it does seem, and you know, we've been tracking this trend for a long time now at Freedom Project Media on the Newman Report blog. It seems like all other religions, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, all the you know pa pagan Native American traditions, Wicca, all of these are welcome in the public school system. The only ones that are not welcome are Christianity and Judaism, as you mentioned. So no Ten Commandments, no Lord's Prayer, no Bible, except to demonize those things. And of course, we know you know the reigning religion of the public school system, as um, mandated by the Supreme Court in the early. 60s was the religious humanism of John Dewey. So, uh, you know, it's, it's really troubling what's happening here. You know, it, it's mostly Christians who pay the taxes for these public schools, and yet Christianity is not allowed and all the other religions are being promoted. Uh, you know, it's, it's a really, really serious situation, Duke. And, and it, you know, it's not an isolated case here or there. It's a national thing that's happening, very deliberate, very engineered. And actually here in Spain, uh, we're at the UN Climate Summit, you can see the results of it, right? You've got uh, all these young Western kids out there doing like, uh, you know, Eastern mystic rituals and religious things and, you know, dressing up as Native Americans and saving Mother Earth and paganism. Um, you know, it's having a serious effect. And, and I think ultimately it will, it's going to fundamentally transform uh, what's left of Western Christian civilization. Yeah, and what's really galling about it from a separation of church and state perspective, which the left seems to pretend to be big on, is that they're doing it right around the Ramadan holiday, right? So they're, they're not doing it in March. They're doing it right about the time Ramadan's being celebrated, and they're doing it at a holiday season, right? So the Christmas season rolls around in Western culture. Let's talk about Islamic religion. Let's talk about their rituals. Let's talk about their prayers, their spirituality. However, we won't talk about Christmas, particularly at the Christmas holiday. It's really an odd thing. It is. And, and, you know, and they're also, I think, being very deceptive here because, you know, if you're going to teach the kids about Allah, if you're going to teach them that Muslims have, a, you know, a version of Jesus, uh, I think we need to be clear about it. You know, it, um, apparently they did not teach these children that the Islamic Jesus uh, plans to eventually return and slaughter all the Christians and Jews one day. And you would think if, if the kids are going to be learning about Islam and the Islamic Jesus, it might be important to explain to the kids, yeah, but it's, you know, different than the Jesus that's described in the Bible. I mean, if we're going to be fair and we're going to be having a legitimate educational experience, here. We need to tell the kids the full truth, but they're not doing that. Instead, they're telling them that Allah is the most gracious and the most merciful. Um, you know, I think something's really wrong with that. And, and this parent was very, very upset about it. And I'm sure uh, other parents who came across this were as well. But again, it's a national pattern. And unless and until parents do something about it, it's going to keep getting worse. Well, it's a two for one for the Islamic uh, apologizers, right? Not only do you promote Islamic spirituality and history, you're also taking a shot 
at traditional Christianity. So it's a two for one. Now then these are charter schools. We want to make that clear. And it does mean that parents <coughs> can choose the charter schools. No one has, no one forces these kids to go to charter schools. Uh, money is diverted away from the public school system to pay for these charters, taxpayer money. So it's still a problem and they are still considered public school. But you mentioned something interesting as charter schools. It's another reason to be very careful about charter schools, moms and dads. There's a particularly virulent Islamic cleric who has responsible for maybe over a hundred of these charter schools. His name is Gulen, right? And he promotes Islam and radical Islam through the charter school system. Talk a little bit about him. Yeah, and, and actually, yeah, Fethullah Gulen, he's, he's, as you mentioned, an Islamic cleric from Turkey. Uh, the Turkish government is not uh, very fond of him, we can say. Uh, but uh, he operates uh, what is said to be the largest charter school network in the United States. And uh, he's got this you know, international movement, the Gulenist movement, got a lot of money, a lot of influence. And there are reports from all over the country that these charter schools are actually bringing in uh, Islamic Turkish teachers from Turkey and getting them to, to present Islam in a positive light and denigrate Christianity in these schools. And again, they're funded by taxpayer dollars. So uh, you know, while there are, all these charter schools are very, very strictly limited, they're not allowed to say Christian prayers. They're not allowed to teach the Bible because they're getting public dollars. And yet you have these Islamic controlled charter schools. We don't know the, whether the one in Aurora is or is not. Um, you know, we didn't get all the details because the parent wanted to remain uh, anonymous. But this huge network of charter schools across America being funded by taxpayer dollars is peddling Islam to the children, and they're doing it with the money primarily from Christian taxpayers. Yeah, a couple weeks ago, to wind this down, a couple weeks ago, Kanye West, newly Christianized, went into the American prison system and tried to do some good. And the American left screamed and howled about this was a separation of church and state. We can't have Christianity in the prisons, let alone the schools. Meanwhile, you've got a huge Islamic outreach in the federal prisons, and and you've got now a huge infiltration of the American public school system by Islamic religion. I'm not talking about history and culture, Islamic religious ideas. And the same radical left that condemns Christianity has nothing to say about this. You're right. It's orchestrated, uh, uh, Alex, and it's not going to end well. <laughs> 